Hello everybody! In this video we're going to try to make soap out of olive oil and baking soda. The reaction that converts oils into soap is called saponification reaction. In this reaction, a hydroxide ion attacks the carbonyl group of a triglyceride, converting the triglyceride into three carboxylates with alkyl chains and one molecule of glycerol. And the key to the success of this reaction is a high concentration of the hydroxide ions. Normally, when people make soap, they use sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is very basic and very caustic, so we could not mail this to our students. Instead, we had to think of some alternatives. So, what do you have in your house that's really basic? Other than Starbucks and leggings? <laughs> so, what do you have in your house that is basic? It's a really common substance, most people should have it in their kitchen, and it is baking soda. It's actually not all that basic, but it's probably the most basic thing that you have. But we could do something that will make it a stronger base. But even after that, it still is going to be a pretty weak base compared to sodium hydroxide. So in order to make this a slightly better base, we're going to convert sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda, into sodium carbonate, which is usually called washing soda. And sodium carbonate is a lot more basic than sodium bicarbonate. So this will help us generate a little bit more hydroxide ions in our solution than just sodium bicarbonate. And to convert sodium bicarbonate into sodium carbonate, we're going to have to heat it. So for this experiment, we're going to need several items from our kit that you received in the mail and some items from your home. So from the kit, you're going to need your large jar, the foil, the piece of foil, the red cup, and the gloves. And from your home, you're going to need a mitten, an oven mitten, a baking soda, olive oil, uh, measuring spoons, some water, something to stir with, and I use the chopstick for my experiment. And you're also going to need a shallow pot that we're going to use for uh, a water bath. And you're also going to need a house of house oven. <laughs> And you're also going to need a kitchen oven and a stove. And to do these experiments, we're going to have to put on proper attire. The most important thing to do is to cover up our arms to protect our skin from splashing. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a little boat or a tray out of this foil in order for us to bake the baking soda in it. So we can fo fold up the sides and then pinch the corners and fold them. And then we're going to measure out two tablespoons of baking soda. This thing is all shredded. Whenever my mom did this, she was like shreds of packaging. <laughs> so, so make sure that they're nice and even. So there's our first tablespoon. Here's our second tablespoon. And then you're going to even it out in your tray. Now we're going to heat our oven to 450 degrees. And once it's ready, we're going to bake our baking soda. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have had this on there. Right, after we've baked our baking soda for roughly 25 to 30 minutes, we're going to turn the oven off and we're going to take our baking soda out of the oven. So make sure to use your oven mitts to not burn your hands when you do this part. Now we're just going to let it cool and then we're going to transfer it into our jar. Now before we start handling our washing soda, we're going to put on our gloves because it is much more caustic than the baking soda.
And once it has cooled to room temperature and it's safe for you to touch, we take our large mason. Why does this have water in it? Now we're going to take our large mason jar and we're going to transfer our baked baking soda into the jar. Next, we're going to add some water to this and try to dissolve all of it. And we're going to start with just four tablespoons of water and see how that goes. So there's one, two, three. Notice that it's definitely not dissolved, so maybe heating it will help. So we'll try heating it first, and if it did not dissolve, then we're going to try to add more water to it. Now to heat this, we can't just like put it on the stove by itself, so we're going to create a water bath. And to create our water bath, we're going to take our shallow pot and fill it with water, maybe about an inch or inch and a half of water. And we're going to immerse our large jar into here. And we're going to start heating, heating the pot. Don't judge my pot. I've had it since grad school. Now I want to show you the difference between sodium bicarbonate and sodium carbonate. We're going to use pH paper to test the pH of the solutions of the two salts. We're going to start with sodium bicarbonate and tear off a small piece of pH paper and dip it into our sodium bicarb solution. Notice that it turns kind of a, like a greenish blue color, indicating that it is in fact basic, but not super basic. Now we're going to do the same for sodium carbonate, which is the salt that we got after baking the baking soda. Notice how much darker the blue color is when we dip the pH paper into sodium carbonate. And let me just bring the other piece of paper to compare. So this shows the difference between sodium bicarbonate here and sodium carbonate on the right. Notice that this filter paper is much a much darker blue indicating that it's more basic. Now the water bath is starting is getting close to boiling and our salt still hasn't quite dissolved yet. So I'm going to add another tablespoon of water to this mixture. Now it's getting pretty close to being dissolved. Now that all of our sodium carbonate is dissolved, we're ready to add our oil. And we're going to add three tablespoons of olive oil. Now we're going to leave our water bath on low to medium heat and we're going to occasionally stir it. And to stir it, we're going to use our oven mitten to make sure that the steam from our water bath does not burn our hand. So let's put this on and we'll use our stirring implements to stir the mixture. Notice that our mixture is already starting to turn turbid. about an hour or two hours until it starts to thicken. After about an hour of heating and stirring, your mixture is going to start looking like this. 
a lot murkier, but still very much a liquid. Okay, to be honest, this doesn't really work all that well. If you look at it, after a whole hour of stirring and heating, there's still a pretty thick layer of oil on the top and a layer of water um, or aqueous solution on the bottom. And in the middle is where you kind of start to see a bit of actual solid soap starting to form. The reason why this did not work well is because the hydroxide ion concentration in our reaction mixture was really low. So when people make soap, they usually use sodium hydroxide. Whereas we used sodium carbonate. And sodium carbonate does make some hydroxide ion as it dissociates in water, but the concentration of hydroxide ion in a sodium bicarbonate solution is much, much lower. So if you look at the pKb of uh, sodium hydroxide and you compare it to the pKb of sodium carbonate, you're going to see that the hydroxide ion concentration in these two solutions is going to differ by like four orders of magnitude. So the reaction will go because we are producing some hydroxide ions as the sodium carbonate is dissolving and reacting with water, but the concentration is just a lot lower. So our reaction is going to be much, much, much slower than if we were to use sodium hydroxide. I do have one batch that I've been kind of stirring and heating for about a week now, and you can see that the thick layer of soap is starting to form quite well, but there's still a, a lot of the water on the bottom because I had to use quite a bit of water in order to get the sodium carbonate to dissolve. And even then, the all of the oil still hasn't reacted. So if you kind of like swirl it, you can see that it's there's a bunch of like little crusties of sodium carbonate at the top, and the oil is definitely still present in the mixture. So this reaction does work, but it's just very slow, and that is because our hydroxide ion concentration is really low. So I don't know, maybe I guess we could keep stirring and occasionally heating these mixtures for another month and see how it works out. So to sum things up, sodium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate is not very efficient for making soap. Instead, if you really wanted to make actual soap, you would have to buy sodium hydroxide. But if you were to do that, be very, very careful because sodium hydroxide is uh, very basic and very caustic. Um, well, enjoy making your semi-soaps. Thanks for watching the video and shout out to my boyfriend Brett for the awesome camera work.